because of increases in enrollment and, in, and the increase in the average cost per student, that the original 50%, which would have had money to spare, had to be reduced to 47.5%, which is the amendment I brought for revision and we're bringing before the House. Uh, with the 47.5%, it, it still has a little uh, money to spare within the uh, existing appropriations. Now, as for going forward, if I am able to present this amendment and we want to pass as amended, then between now and when this comes up, I will have the figures to show you, which off the top of my head are these. I'm seeing reductions annually in, in enrollment of around 6% of students. So that, would, that should lead to a reduction every year in adequacy funds required. It would even lead amounts to even give almost 2% a year increase in the stipend per student and still have money left for the growth of charter schools, which probably might add 1% a year. Uh, they're, they're showing good growth. We've heard enough testimony to know that it's, it's the answer for many people, even though it's, it's only like around 2% of the student body. It's programs that are, are life-saving for many families. Um, in some cases, they've reduced the amount of special ed required for a particular student. They're, they're being very successful for a great many students. And as was pointed out, well, the at-risk students, uh, we didn't have as many for the at-risk students. Well, part of it is the rather cheap funding we're doing. Now, it's about eight years ago we decided in order to save the charity school, we had to add 2,000 to the stipend we give for all the other adequacies. At the time we did it, it probably came somewhere approaching 50% of what we spent on the other public school students. The only other alternative to keep them with a steady supply of funds is to let, allow them to get to the property tax base, which there was reluctance to do that. So the, the parents usually are in a fundraising uh, attitude all the time. Uh, David Alaconis, that some of you may remember, came to testify. He's on the board of the, uh, the one in science and technology charity school. They raised 250000 a year to keep that school going. Now, if we want to in, have increases for the at-risk students, we've got to be able to fund this a little better, which is what this bill would propose. And then going forward, as I say, between now and when this comes before us, Mickey and I will sit down and do some forecasting. And we can almost do it. As I look at the, at the student enrollment in each class in the school in my town, the classes are getting smaller year after year. So. We're seeing a steady in, a decrease in, in total enrollment, which will free up some funds within the adequacy formula to not only add uh, an increase in the, the average stipend across the board, but to also have more funds to spare, to spare for charter school growth and still hopefully save property tax. So I would hope that you would overturn this. It has been carefully thought out, and going forward, we will have figures when we come to the uh, full house, whether or not you pass this, and I tell my friends in Division Two, you may tell me that you support charter schools, but you will have a very time, hard time convincing me or the parents of the charter school or the students of the charter school that you do support charter schools if you vote this down when our job was to find the available funds and they are there. So please pass this bill. Please overturn this interim study. The money is there and we need to help the charter schools 